So uh, today I wanted to try to make a video to explain how a beginner or a programmer might go about making music for their game and uh, putting it into a Nintendo 64 game. I'm not at all very much of a programmer, but I can try to explain things on the music side. So step one is finding a tool that you like using to make MIDI files. I would recommend this thing called Busca Kyoal. And uh, an interesting fact about it is in Irish, it seems to mean accordion or music box. And it's a very cool and fun and simple tool to make music. There's an online version so you can make music anywhere. That seems to be down right now. We can try downloading it real fast. Uh, other alternatives are GarageBand, if you like that. Fruity Loops is uh, popular for people who are getting into working on music. A lot of those have similar features. They're sequencers, uh, so that means you lay out musical notes in a timeline, basically. Okay, I might try to link to a version with uh, the Internet Archive if I can, if I can get that working. So at any rate, you find software that allows you to make music in the way that you like. You'll probably want to learn a little bit about music theory. My favorite sources for that happen to be Rick Beato. He's a very knowledgeable audio engineer, producer, and musician. I think he's, he's a valuable resource of music information for people at any level, to be honest. I studied music starting in middle school, high school, I went to college and went to a music school at my public university, and I still find all of his stuff to be informing and insightful. Basics of music theory, I will copy the links to some of these in the description. Another valuable source of information is Reddit music theory. I like hanging out here a lot. Uh, you can... You can learn all about interesting music ideas that other people are thinking about. Uh, I find all of this to be inspirational because sometimes helping other people with their problems causes me to think about a different idea or a different problem. And sometimes that can be a, uh, a seed for a new song or a music idea. And so I think that is very useful as well. So I'll link, I'll link to these in the description. Uh, the, the program that I happen to prefer using, I can explain the pros and cons of using Reaper. Uh, for one, it is very efficient software. It can run in, on almost any kind of computer. It is very affordable. It is free to try for as long as you want. And then when you are obligated to pay for it, it's about $60 for the license. During the pandemic, they offered free licenses, which I thought was an amazing uh, business practice. The dev of it was also the developer of Winamp, the celebrated Winamp. So that is a very cool link to the past and also proof of quality, in my opinion. So anyway, I like Reaper because it's efficient. It can do basically everything you want it to, including working with video. Sometimes the menus are overwhelming. Uh, it seems to mostly be aimed at audio engineers, which I am and studied to be. It's customizable, for one thing. So, the song that I have pulled up right now is the song that I made for our game, Telecation Gemini, and this is called Reduce Gravity. The uh, original idea where this came from, I was learning how to play bass lines with my left hand while playing chords with my right. And I was motivated by music theory to apply those in a certain pattern. There's a pattern in music called the Circle of Fifths. And it's popular in a lot of famous songs like Autumn Leaves, a jazz standard. It's also famous in a, a few Stevie Wonder songs like Isn't She Lovely. So that's what motivated me to make the song. And so your first step in Reaper... Uh, you would go to track, new track, and now you have a blank track. You would want to hit effects, and the instrument that I happened to use was Fort Sondo for writing a lot of these. And this is a sampler, 
and you can download SFV files for most of your favorite retro video games from a place called Musical Artifacts. And so I will link this in the description as well. So we can load up some of these. These are some examples that I have. So yeah, what I, what I did here, I had a draw bar organ for this sound and I played it, I played the parts in with my MIDI keyboard. Uh, you can draw them in as well. Uh, one of the things you get from playing them in is you get more human performances. The velocities uh, are subtly different in the way that a human might and the timing is slightly off and uh, sometimes that's something that uh, you like. To get MIDI input in here, I record arm right here uh, you monitor input to also hear the sounds of it, and then I set the MIDI input to all channels. I also hit Control P to go to Preferences, go to MIDI Devices, and make sure that my MIDI controller is up and working. I am not actually using that right now, but we're just running through the process that I went to, to get it set up, and so you record arm to make sure you can monitor your MIDI input right here. You get yellow bars and then you hit the record button right here and you can loop it as many times as you want. And so once you have a MIDI performance like this, so once you have that, the way that Reaper is set up to do this, uh, for one, you want to make sure that this is on a designated channel for the N64 implementation and the way that it does it in stock Reaper is you go to note channel and then in this case this organ part is on channel 1 and so I would want to make sure that all the notes for this channel are on channel 1. So I select everything, click on it, channel 1. Uh, I this this whole process was pretty tedious and so I customized Reaper to have these custom buttons up here and so I do channel one event channel one right here and I can by the way I can copy I can share my Reaper config with everybody with the Nintendo 64 community so you guys have these buttons as well so for example if I move everything to channel 10 channel 10 and then you can go back and check note channel it's all 10 and so I can change it to channel one and that's the same thing as hitting this button. Edit set events to channel one. So that's that's what I had to do for each of these. I designated keys are in channel one. Drums will always be in 10. So typically I would name that right here. And so similarly, you can go note channel, channel 10. Same thing for the bass. So I really only have three channels of information here. Keys on one, the organ, drums on channel 10, and bass on channel two. Once you have all of that done, you would want to, uh, for one, okay, so you, you would want to make sure you glue all your items together so they're solid MIDI files. And you would also, you also want to go into your event list up here. You can hit Alt-3 or click on this button and go to the very beginning. And you want to make sure you start your, your MIDI file with a bank select, bank select event and, and program change event. And so how you would do that typically is I go here. You scroll to the beginning of it like this. And then you go event list, insert new event, insert new bank program select event. And so in this instance, we're using general MIDI load file. I select GM rebank right here. And then we want an organ sound. And so rock organ. And then we want to make sure that this channel right here matches this channel. 
So for a base, we will make we would make it channel two because everything is set to channel two. So that is basically it for here. In the workflow that I was using, I did not have to do a bank program select for drums because it's because channel 10 is automatically assumed to be drums, and so they just work that way. To export all of this, then select all of my MIDI events like this. I have uh, the backspace to be the keybind to set the time selection. You can set this up here to loop however you want. And when I hit backspace, it sets it to exactly the beginning and end of whatever I have selected. And so this way I, I make sure that I have the beginning of my song uh, being selected and the end. And so I select all the tracks over here. One, two, three, file, export project MIDI. And I wanna make sure time selection only is selected, uh, selected tracks only, and then you pick where you export the song. And so here I would do this. And most importantly, you want to merge to single MIDI track type zero file. And so you will get one, a single MIDI file that has three tracks all combined in it. And that is what we're looking for. So you hit okay. And finally, at the end of the process, once I think I have exported a usable MIDI file, I go into MIDI player two, which was gracefully written and provided by our programmer, uh, Lambert James. Uh, I, I test out my MIDI file with the ROM building app, uh, MIDI player 2.0 and to do that So to do that first you have to make sure that you point the bat file to the directory that your emulator is in uh, That's so that's very important. You also want to make sure That your MIDI files are in the same folder as this bat file so finally, the moment of truth, you drag, you drag this to the bat file. And so with this, we have confirmation that our MIDI will work when sent to a programmer and implemented in a Nintendo 64 song. This is important so that we can make sure that all the instrument designations are working, that everything is the correct volume, uh, tempo is another issue. And so yeah, that is the process we use uh, in making Telecation Gemini. If anybody has any questions, feel free to ask me. I am open and interested in learning other ways of working and hopefully uh, streaming audio in our next project. Thanks.